understand. We start with a talk about the type of forward technology. Okay. Well, first of all, I want to thank everyone for for being here, and especially thank my committee members for uh, agreeing to be on my committee. Uh, okay. So my uh, the title is towards the model theory of logarithmic trans series. So I first want to say what this title means. So I'm not I'm not going to be doing a summary of the entire thesis. I'm I'm going to be talking about the later parts, chapter seven and eight. So just some. Uh, Brief introduction. There's this object called T log, the differential field of logarithmic trans series, and my goal is to study the model theory of uh, T log. And the towards means that this is still work in progress. So I'm going to be discussing a, a strategy uh, that I've developed for uh, studying T log. Okay. And so there's T log. There's also this larger field. T, the differential field of logarithmic exponential trans series, which is a much bigger object, and this was successfully studied uh, by uh, Lau, Matthias, and also your Spanderhoven, who couldn't make it. Um, and so they successfully studied this in the book Adam TT, Asymptotic Differential Algebra Model Theory Trans Series. And just keep in mind, everything that I'm trying to do for T log, and I'm trying to do it sort of in analogy with what they did for T. So I will often be comparing T log and T in this talk. Okay, so, um, so now I want to just briefly introduce what is this field T log is. Uh, so on this slide, I'm just describing the, the ordered valued field structure of T log. So T log is a union of these so-called Hahn fields, the R, L, N. So you, these are sort of power series or generalized series where the Coefficients come from R, and the monomials are these uh, power products of L0 through Ln, where L0 is x, L1 is log x, L2 is log log x, etc. And uh, the monomials are ordered such that, uh, in a very natural asymptotic way, where x is infinitely larger than log x, which is infinitely larger than log log x, etc. So that's what that line there means. Okay. And Typical elements of T log look like these types of series here. Um, yeah, and perhaps you might think that this union construction is a little strange, but what this really says is that in any particular uh, single trans series, there's a, a bound on a, the iteration depth of the logarithm that can occur in that series. So this is important for technical reasons later. Okay, and so I, I said that this is an ordered value field. Um, so by construction, it's actually the field is a real closed field, so there's a definable ordering. You take an element, you declare an element to be positive if it's a square. But this actually just agrees with the natural ordering you'd want to put on series. So for instance, this first series, you have the, the largest, you look at the largest coefficient, or uh, monomial, it has coefficient minus two, so this series is negative. This series here is positive, because you got a, a plus one there. So this is an ordered value field T log. Oh, wait a minute now. Um, isn't right. Um, little, oh yeah, no, you're right. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> so, okay, and since this is a value field, uh, I'll just say that the the residue field is 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 R, the real numbers, and the value group. I won't say too much about the structure, but you can take the just take a union of these monomial groups form an additive copy of it, and then take the uh, reverse order. That's the uh, value. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to uh, equip T log with a derivative to make it a differential field or a ordered value differential field. So, and by derivative I mean an additive map that satisfies a, the, the product rule or the, the leanness rule. So, we do this in a very natural way. We, we set uh, x prime, the L0 prime to 1, and uh, log x prime to 1 over x, etc. So it's the natural derivation that you'd want to put on these things. So for instance, x cubed log x plus dot 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 prime, it's going to be 3x squared log x plus a bunch of other stuff. So, so it's just the, the natural derivation that you would um, put on it from, from uh, calculus. Okay, 
And in addition to the derivative, we have the logarithmic derivative, which is, is what I call the, the dagger here. So f dagger, this is just f prime over f. And for, for what we do, we like to treat the derivative, the, both the derivative and the logarithmic derivative sort of on equal footing. They're of equal importance. Okay, and so uh, just an example, this is for later, take a arbitrary monomial here, its dagger is this expression here, where we have these minus ones in the exponents. So n nothing else can occur as the uh, logarithmic derivative of one of these monomials. And that always is of this form. Yeah. So the field T log together, the derivative is called a differential field. Um, all differential fields have a field of constants. You just say, take all the elements of the field whose derivative is 0. In this case, the field of constants is R as well, the real numbers, where we identify a real number with the constant series, uh, where it's just the real number, there's no x's and log x's, etc. Okay. Yeah. So order, these ordered value differential fields like T log and also like T, they uh, belong to a, cl a class of fields called H fields, where H fields are fields like this that have a natural notion of asymptotics, just like uh, T log and, and T. So I um, have a definition of H field here. So if K is an ordered value differential field, then we say K is an H field if it satisfies first this H1 condition for all F and K. If F is greater than the constant field, then F prime, its derivative is zero. And this has a intuitive meaning. So if you think of F as like a function, then F being bigger than constants means that it goes, it, it grows faster, uh, it, it eventually goes to plus infinity. Um, and functions that do that, their derivative tends to be positive because their slope's positive. Uh, this is from calculus. So, uh, and then, of course, these are just arbitrary Fs in, in fields, they're not necessarily functions, but this is sort of the concept, the asymptotic concept of H1. So the H2 is, is similar. So. The, this says that the valuation ring of the of K is the constant field plus the maximal ideal of the valuation ring, where the valuation ring is, happens to be the convex hull of the constant field. And the, the intuitive uh, notion behind this is if you have some function whose uh, limit is a, is a real number, so it doesn't go to plus or minus infinity, then there's a, some constant that you can subtract off from the constant from the function so that the limit goes to zero. So it puts in the maximum deal. So that's, that's what H2 means. And so, uh, as it turns out, T log and, and T are both H fields. So is any uh, Hardy field containing R is also an H field, where a Hardy field is a differential field of germs of functions at plus infinity, close to the derivation. Okay. So, yeah, I guess I want to say a little bit more about T. It's in what sense is it bigger than T log? Well, it contains T log. It's also closed under uh, the exponential function. So you can, you're able to form a lot uh, crazier series in T than you are in, in T log. Okay. So now, okay, so we're, why, why, are we, why do we care about H fields? When they did their work on T, they construed T as an H field, and they studied the theory of H fields. And so, uh, this is why I, I want to naturally consider T log as an H field. So, some nice properties of H fields. So, uh, this is so this essentially says that the, the the derivative acts on entire asymptotic classes of elements. So, for instance, if you have an element f in your h field and the valuation is on zero, then you might ask, what is the valuation of f prime? Does it depend on f? As it turns out, it, it only depends on the valuation of f. So this allows us to induce a map from the value group to the value group, which is induced by the derivative on the field level. So, okay, and then the same thing for the logarithmic derivative as well. You, uh, what's the, the valuation of the logarithmic derivative of f? It depends only on Bf, so we get an induced map by the logarithmic derivative 
called C, and I'm, I'm putting C in red here because it's sort of think of it as, as being more important. And so for, for H fields, what we do is we take the value group that, together with this C map, which is always there, put them together as a pair, and we call the pair the asymptotic couple of K. So, so uh, H fields have more than just a value group, they have an asymptotic couple. So there's some additional structure on the value group which encodes how the derivative acts in the field. And the asymptotic couple is often a much simpler object to deal with than the field itself. So a natural first step in studying the model theory for T log is to study its asymptotic couple. So this is what I did. Um, so so this, is, this essentially says that we have a pretty good understanding of the model theory of the asymptotic couple. So I, I found a natural language to study this in and prove that it has quantified elimination. This model complete, it also has NIP. So there's very other, various other um, properties that it has as well. Okay. So anyway, uh, just remember that associated to T log, there's an asymptotic couple. And the asymptotic couple is something that we understand now rather well. So then now uh, we want to turn our attention to T log. Okay. So um, here are some other nice properties that H fields may or may not have. As it turns out, both T and T log have these two properties. So this first one, omega free. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't want to say too much about omega free, but it's just a, it's a magical property which makes nice theorems uh, hold. It's a first order property here, because um, you have for all exists, and then there's some relationship there. And, okay, and both T and T lock have this property. Perhaps more intuitive is this next property, Newtonian, which T and T lock have. So any, usually when you study some sort of valued fields and you want it to be nice, you need some notion of Hensilian. For value differential fields, there's a notion of differential Hensilian, which involves uh, differential polynomials instead of usual polynomials. Um, and there is a notion of differential Hensilian for value differential fields. But unfortunately, uh, H fields can't be differential Hensilian, but there's the notion of Newtonian is like differential Hensilian, it's, it's, it says that you can simulate being differential Hensilian arbitrarily well by, by suitably replacing your derivative in your field by a multiple of the derivative and then doing some coarsening of the valuation. And just the last thing I'll say about this is, so why does T log satisfy both these properties? There's a, they have a theorem that says that if you're closed under the, uh, or if you're Close under integration, and then you're you're constructed as a union of these so-called spherically complete grounded H fields, where grounded means you have the smallest comparability class there. If your field is of this form, then you automatically have these two properties. So this is one of the reasons why uh, we have this construction here as, as the union. So then now here's a, maybe a more down-to-earth property that H fields might have, a notion of Louisville closed. So we, we say a, a real closed H field K is Louisville closed if everything in K, you can integrate it so it occurs as the derivative of something else. And then also everything in K occurs as a logarithmic derivative of something else. So you can exponentially integrate everything. So, so this is a, a really nice property to have. And their field T has this property. Uh, I mentioned it before it was closed under the exponential. Um, so unfortunately though, <coughs> T log does not have this property. It's not legal close. And so this is, if you're keeping track, this is the first property that T log and T do not share that I mentioned. Um, but, it, so it is closed under the, the taking integrals. Unfortunately, though, it's not closed undertaking exponential integrals. So not everything that occurs is a logarithmic derivative. It's not, it's not too hard to see this. So for instance, you could ask, is the element 1 
a logarithmic derivative? Well, if it, if it was, if so if you had f dagger equal 1, so it's f prime equals f, that element would have to look like and act like e to the x, but there's nothing in t log that looks like e to the x. Okay. Okay, so now I, now I want to say what the, what one of the main results about the field T is. So first, can, uh, consider the language L, which is this natural language for ordered value differential fields. So they showed that, that the theory of T as a L structure it can be axiomatized by it's a real closed omega-free Newtonian H field with this small derivation property, which I didn't mention yet. Um, and then also it's Lugal closed. So T has all the properties that I've mentioned so far, plus this, and furthermore, that's a complete axiomatization for their theory of T. So uh, I, I put down in black here in this first bullet point everything that is true about T log, and then the red item is the thing that's not true about T log. And so if we unpack that, okay, what causes the issue? It's not the integration, it's the exponential integration. Oh, and then furthermore, they showed that T is model complete as an L structure here. And so model completeness is the, I guess, the result that we're going for with T log. And, okay, what's, what's uh, model complete means for this talk, for the purposes of this talk, it means that every definable subset of n to the n is actually existentially definable. So that means if you have some definable set, with perhaps with a really complicated definition, you can find another definition which is just one ex, or an existential quantifier and then a uh, quantifier free formula. And so it's a, like a weak form of quantifier elimination or quantifier reduction. Right. And so to, to attempt to get model completeness for T log, a natural starting point is to zero in on that set there, the, the set of daggers, or the set of logarithmic derivatives, and ask, is this set existentially uh, definable? Is its complement existentially definable? And, and sort of study this. Because clearly for T, the daggers is just everything that's easily quantifier predefinable. So, so in the next slide, we're going to look at, look at um, the set of daggers in, in T log. So, the, is the set of daggers existentially definable? Turns out it is. This is uh, not too hard. So, something is a dagger if there's something else in the field whose logarithmic derivative is that thing. So, it's existentially definable. Okay. Perhaps what's maybe more interesting is when is something not a dagger? Is that existentially definable? So, to do that, we can just write down a general element, non-zero element of T log. So given any uh, series, we can factor out the leading monomial. So, so we can write it as a constant times monomial times 1 plus epsilon, where epsilon is infinitesimal. Then we can compute its logarithmic derivative. OK, so, so uh, the logarithmic derivative of this is going to be this thing that we had from the beginning. So this sum where we have the minus 1s as the exponents, plus something that's, that I call small in some sense here. This is the logarithmic derivative of 1 plus epsilon here, the epsilon prime over 1 plus epsilon. Okay. Um, and then, so, okay, so these, all logarithmic derivatives look like this, although it might, it might seem like here we have a we have an answer, but it's sort of in terms of the support of the series. Like we're saying, what monomials are allowed to occur in the series? So it might not be very uh, satisfying because it's not first order. But so we but we do have this asymptotic couple structure on the T log, and so with yeah in the asymptotic couple we can define this set C capital C, which is the image of the C map on the asymptotic couple, and then note that the, these monomials that occur here are in this definable set there. And then also this small thing here, by small, 
and I mean that it's this is bigger, the valuation of the small thing is bigger than the C set. Okay. And uh, furthermore, what's, what more is true is that any, any expression in this form where we have a finite sum like this and then some, replace this with anything that's small in the sense that the, its valuation is above the C set, that actually will be also a logarithmic derivative. So, um, I guess you'd have to know that small things occur of the form epsilon prime over one plus epsilon for some epsilon. This is not uh, this is not obvious, but it actually follows from the Newtonianity of, of T log. Okay, and so what this what this means is that if we have something that's not a logarithmic derivative, it won't be of this form. So it'll have something. There will be some term in the series which is not small but it's not one of these things here. Okay, so we can actually turn this into an existential definition. Um, so I'm saying that an element is not a logarithmic derivative if there exists an element such that if you compute its dagger, subtract it from your first element, compute the valuation, you'll find that it's in the downward closure of the C-set but not in the C-set. So, essentially what this means is if you have something that's not a logarithmic derivative, there's going to be some monomial that shouldn't be there. But all, and so you subtract off from that series all the monomials that should be there, so that the bad monomial is the biggest one. So then you compute the valuation and you see it's in that set. Yeah. So, and, and I claim that this is an existential definition. Um, yeah. So I have there exists out in front. You might object because uh, there might be some hidden uh, quantifiers in there. But okay, as I as I mentioned before, we have model completeness for T log or the sorry for the asymptote couple of T log in a very natural language, and so this is a definable subset of the asymptotic couple. Therefore, there's an existential definition, so you can pull that definition up. And so you can actually rewrite this so that, that it is actually an existential uh, definition. Okay, so, so I want to study... Okay, so, so between the two of these, we've essentially answered when are things logarithmic derivatives, when are things not logarithmic derivatives. And there's this property here which answers the question, when are things not logarithmic derivatives? And so what I want to do is I want to study that property. And H fields with this property, but I want to do it in a more flexible setting where we can consider uh, subfields of uh, H fields with that property, take extensions of, of fields with this property. So I want to extend the language and introduce a new class of, uh, of fields, the so-called LD H fields, where well, I do a definition here. So, Okay, assume we have asymptotic integration. So we take an H field K and a subset LD in it. And so we call the pair, the KLD, we call that an LD H field if it satisfies these four axioms. So the first one, LD is a vector space over the constants. The second one says that LD has to contain the logarithmic derivatives. The third one says LD has to contain that small set of elements that I mentioned. And then the fourth one says that the valuation of everything LD has to be in one of these three definable subsets of the uh, asymptotic couple. Okay. So, yeah, so the idea is that this is going to be an LD H field, but then we want subfields of that. Uh, some subfields of this that we want to consider want that to be LD uh, H fields as well. Sub so, substructures. Yes, yeah, sub, yeah, sorry, substructures. So, so the LD, it's it, it certainly, so LD I guess stands for logarithmic derivatives, um, but, and, and so it contains logarithmic derivatives, but it might possibly contain a little bit more. And so the idea is that we, the LD set makes a, like a promise or a prophecy that when this field grows up to be a, a model of our theory, that everything that's in the LD set one day is gonna gonna actually become a logarithmic derivative of something. 
and then this a promise the LD set's making. And then everything that's not in the LD set, we're saying you'll never be a log detector of anything. <laughs> Ever. So so the like the LD set sort of keeps track of, of what what things will be allowed to be log derivatives, what things won't be. Um, okay, and so so then we have these two we, we, we turn these existential conditions from the, the previous slide, we turn these into properties that an LD set may or may not have. So the second one is set E2 is, so uh, LDH field has properties <coughs> to it if the LD set is precisely the set of daggers. Okay. And then the other properties, E1, which is more important, uh, says that well, okay. if something's not in the LD set, then we promise that it will never be a logarithmic derivative. So there is something that will eventually be a logarithmic derivative, such that that thing witnesses that the first thing will never be a logarithmic derivative. So this is so we're taking that the existential property here and we're turning it into a uh, like a definition. Okay. And so so some important examples. So T log. Uh, together with its daggers is a C closed LDH field. Oh, I, oh, sorry. If you have both properties, then then I call it that LDH field C closed. Well, so T log with its daggers are it's C closed, and then T together with all of T is C closed. Where because all of T that is the set of daggers of T because T is a little closed. Um, okay, so now now that we have this class of LDH fields, I want to describe this uh, conjecture that I'm making for model completeness of T log. So we have this language LLD, which is the L, the language for order value differential fields, together with the new set LD, which is a unary relation symbol. Then we can define a theory T log. So this is a, uh, not a blackboard T, this is a regular T for theory, T log to be the LLD theory, whose models are precisely the LDH fields, such that the H field is real closed omega-3 Newtonian. The LDH field is C closed. And then the asymptotic couple models the theory of the asymptotic couple of, of T log. So, OK, and so I, I've sort of said already that T log satisfies all of these things. So, I mean, clearly, the asymptotic couple of T log models the theory of the asymptotic couple of T log. Okay. Um, and so I'm, I'm conjecturing that the, this theory T log is model complete. Okay. And, and so, what I said before about in, in T log, the daggers and its complement are both existentially definable. So, if T log is model complete, then we can remove, we actually didn't need the LD in the language. So uh, the version of T log with, in just the language L would also be model complete. Although to prove model completeness, we need to develop sort of an extension theory for LDH fields. And so for this reason, I want to keep the LD set around. So to prove model completeness, in practice, we would have to prove something like this. Where, where we have uh, okay, you don't you don't have to read it. Just um, <laughs> it's this it's this usual thing where we have a, a model of our theory, some sort of substructure, and then we have and then that gets embedded into a highly saturated model of the theory, and then we want to be able to show that we can always extend this embedding from the this model. And so in order to do this, we have to look at special cases and, and uh, develop an entire extension theory for LDH fields. Okay. And so this is, and that's essentially the content of chapter 7, is the studying LDH fields. Okay. So first I want to describe some things that, that we can actually can handle for extending LDH fields. So here's the definition. Given to two of these fields such that the L contains K, then we say that this LDH field is an extension of that one if the bigger LD set 
intersecting with a smaller field is just the smaller LD set. So this is like saying the new promises that we make in the bigger field, they agree with the promises that we made in the smaller field. So if we promise that something's a logarithmic, will be a logarithmic derivative, we're still promising that. And we're not, things that we said you can't be a logarithmic derivative, they still can't be. So, okay, and so one thing we can do is suppose, suppose that L is an algebraic extension of K, and the small field has this E1 property, which is a property we want to keep track of and, and never lose, and the asymptotic couple models the asymptotic couple of our theory, then we can handle this case. There's a unique way to extend the LD set to the, the bigger field, such that it's an uh, extension of LDH fields, and also, the, the E1 property that we want it to keep is still there in the bigger field. Okay. And, of course, this, is, this gets used primarily when we want to take algebraic closures, or real closures. So, so when, when it comes time to play this game, anytime we want to do a real closure of something, that's no problem. Okay. So another, another case that we can handle is suppose the larger H field is just generated by adjoining new constants to the small H field. So, so all we did is add new constants, probably transcendental constants. And if uh, the small field is Hensilian, the asymptotic couple models our theory, and we have E1, then again we can also uniquely extend the, uh, the LD set upwards and the property that we want to keep so, what this says in practice is, for this, this embedding uh, scheme, we can handle the residue field just in one shot. Just adjoin all the constants from K to E, and then the residue field extension issue is, is taken care of. Okay. Okay, and so, since ultimately we want to, we're interested in C-closed LDH fields, so we can you don't have to worry about the LD predicate. You might, you might ask, well, we're, we're making promises. Can we actually keep them? And so it's, that's what this says here. So I, I define this notion of a C closure where, so given, a, given an LDH field, a C closure is, is a larger LDH field that is real closed. It's C closed, so we kept all our promises. And any other real closed, C closed field that it extends into, the, the C closure has this uh, universal property that it embeds in there. Yeah, and so, so this says here, the, this proposition says, if we have E1, our field is lambda free, so it's a weakening of omega free, and the asymptotic couple models are a theory, then we have a C closure. So, so that's good news. Um, Okay, so then now we will venture into uh, things that are more of like the to-do list type items. So, Newtonization. So, so they have a, a notion of Newtonization where it's essentially a, a smallest Newtonian extension that embeds into any uh, Newtonian extension. And for omega free H fields, they've proven that Newtonizations exist. Okay, so we can take K and T to be a Newtonization of K. And what what would be really, really nice to prove is, is this thing here. We want to show that we can always extend uniquely the LD set up to the Newtonization. So because together with this and the C closure business, this handles any uh, differential algebraic extension, essentially. Um, yeah, and, and so what, as it turns out, this, we can reduce this issue to handling just uh, the, uh, the linear case. So if we can extend to something, if, if we can extend in this way just to something that's linearly Newtonian, where linearly Newtonian is like Newtonian except for only degree one differential polynomials. So if we can do just the linear case, then it follows that we can do the full Newtonian case as well. What's the, what's the I standing for? I of L? Oh, so so I is 
like take the small elements of L. So so yeah, so in, in L I guess in the statement of L D three a few slides ago, yeah. I defined I. Okay. Okay. So um, yeah, and so this is this is actually maybe even a little surprising because you might think that arbitrary degree differential polynomials, which can be really complicated, would be harder to deal with than degree one differential polynomials, which uh, are often easier to deal with. But it seems that in this case, once you know how to do degree one, then arbitrary degree follows very easily. Okay. So I'm so I'm calling this this item on the to-do list conjecture one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because 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 of the thing where if you're linearly Newtonian, then you have to consider only special PC sequences for the full uh, unitization. No, yeah. we already I guess we already know that L D star in that conjecture is an L D set on L, such mm -hmm. that K comma L D is contained in L comma L D star. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So because. In this case, it will be an immediate extension, and I showed that you're always able to get um, like a canonical smallest LD set extension. I mean, the, the, the real issue is, is having it satisfy E1. So extending the LD set, not an issue, but ensuring that it's the unique one that satisfies E1. But if you know that this extension, the LD star defined as LD plus IL, if that extension you get satisfies E1, then the uniqueness is also, uh, yeah. then you also have uniqueness, right? Yeah, so so for, for these types of extensions, uniqueness and E1 are sort of, they go hand in hand. Right. Okay. Yeah, so it's equivalent to being a maximal LD set. So, and by, and by defined it here as having like the witnessing property. The, okay. That gives the uniqueness. Yeah, I mean, also because this is the smallest possible. E1 says it's it's a largest possible, and so therefore it's the unique. Okay, so then just uh, two more things on the to-do list I want to mention. So this first one says uh, we have to deal with the differentially transcendental immediate extension case. So this is you can think of this as perhaps the, the most generic possible immediate extension you can. And so we'd like to somehow get an extension for the LD set here. Okay, and then also there's this copy of Z case where if you've heard me talk about asymptotic couples before, the, um, we had, the structure of the asymptotic couple has copies of Z and, and so when the asymptotic couple grows in that way, I'd like to also extend the LD set in that way. Uh, so I mean, these are a little bit technical, and this one involves uh, talking about the structure of the asymptotic couple, which is not something I'm going to really get into. Okay. But so the, the main point is that if you if, if I can resolve conjecture one and then this conjecture two, conjecture three, then the model completeness follows. Now, uh, can you go back to the previous slide? Uh, all right, I see. So if conjecture one is is what you need for for what you would like to prove. But yeah, then so you I mean, still need also the other two to get. Yeah, and so, so like this would be a consequence of that, and right. so I'm not I'm not saying I'm not stating this as a conjecture because right. it, it relies just on this more primitive conjecture here. Okay. And then there's these two um, here, and yeah, and so I was, I was saying that that resolving the these three things I said, then model completeness of T log would uh, would be true. And so now this is the end of my talk. Yeah, question. Uh, what, what do you think is the natural um, next thing to do if you want to do these, prove these conjectures? What, 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 
would be the, the, the natural uh, thing to, to start with. Uh, so, so, so for this one, there's, there's multiple things to look at. So I do have, um, including my thesis, there's the sort of the order one version of one linear Newtonian where you just have uh, a single derivative that's uh, which is called one linear Newtonian. I'm able to handle that case in the special case where the C set is just the naturals. So perhaps looking at um, handling that case where the C set might have finitely many copies of Z as well. Also, so I think you've had some ideas about how to reduce general linear to one linear. So what, in, what do we know about factoring? Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. There's uh, I think there's there's the one thing that that Lau was mentioning about um, there. I think it's something something that that you might have done a long time ago about like if if your H field is grounded and um, linearly surjective or something and, and you're algebraically closed and you can factor right. and so somehow. Do you look at factors as whether one and whether two? Right. Yes. And then you go to the algebraic closure, the linear operator, the differential operator factors into order one right. factors. Yes. So one could hope to reduce uh, this conjecture one to one. One to case. the order one case. It's a further yeah. reduction then. I guess so. The, the hope would be um, well. I mean, so the way that we're able to get this from here is, is because. If you're one linear Newtonian, then everything else is the special PC sequence, which which I, I can handle. And so, the the idea would be somehow through factoring, show that if you're one linear Newtonian and some other stuff, then to get the full new linear Newtonian, you just have to consider special PC sequence as well. So so that's that's one idea. Um, so uh, there's also, I mean, this conjecture two seems. Yeah, what but about the these other conjectures? If, uh, if you have a completely generic new element. <coughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so, so I guess um, maybe like two weeks ago, I was like uh, finally going through the, the proof of model completeness, and then I sort of realized that there's this case. But, but I mean, it's, but it seems to, uh, right, that it's the, the most possible generic case that you can consider, and so there should just be know, some way to handle it. And conjecture three is... Um... So, so I, 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 do have, I do have partial uh, stuff on, on here. I'm, I'm able to do an extension where you add a copy of Z such that the LD set extends nicely <coughs> and it embeds into the highly saturated Okay, so, but it's not clear that the extension I construct has the universal property which would allow it to embed into this thing here. So, uh, for that reason, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not including that, that stuff in, in my thesis. But, but it's possible that conjecture, conjecture 3 could um, follow with a little bit more work from some stuff I have currently. But I mean, so what's, what's nice is that you have the value group growing um, in a very what, nice way that we understand because this is this is the uh, model theory of the asymptotic couple, the joint copies of Z, and so so usually when the, the value group grows, you can you can like anchor things to valuations and new valuations, and, um, and so usually it's not too difficult. So in the other case, you know that the C set does not grow, or do you? Yeah, because it's because it's an immediate extension. So in fact, the the asymptotic couple is the same. Another question is, uh, I mean, so uh, in this T case, you know, there's some natural subfields uh, like uh, grid based transfers and so on that uh, if we believe yours. Uh, also satisfy the axioms of our theory and so uh, elementary submodels. I mean, is there a natural uh, differential subfield of T log that you could 
consider and then if everything worked out you know, as an application, you would get the... Um, yeah. I guess you could you consider, mean, like, like consider uh, grid-based logarithmic trans series. Uh -huh. yeah. um, so that, that would be strictly smaller than T log? Just now you mentioned that the adding the predicate LD, mm -hmm. these are both universally and existentially definable. So, yeah. so why do you want to add this predicate LD? Um, well, because it, it makes all this extension theory easier to, to deal with. Because, um, cause, okay, so I have, I have this C notion of C closure. So, but I mean, this is secretly many, many. Uh, mini embedding lemmas, infinitely many of them uh, built up. So, it, so it seems like if I didn't have LD and wasn't considering LDH fields, but just H fields, uh, I'd have to at each step jump from something that's C closed to something that's C closed. And so it'd be hard to. So if I wanted to deal with, say, a really minor case of like adding an algebraic uh, constant, so it's like a very mini extension. What, what exactly are you proving there if you don't have the LD set? If you want that um, embedding lemma to be used in something large scale like this. But, yeah. And ultimately, of course, one wants to do more than model completeness. One would like to have some elimination of quantifiers, and then the LD predicate would definitely be, be needed. Yeah, and it probably uh, would also have to work in like a three-sorted setting. But, Right, and, but uh, at this point, it's, yeah, I mean, one already needs it for the extension level, even to state the extension level. This is like for real close fields, and then you put extension levels for other fields, like the end, the real close fields, and the end. So you do believe that the, the LD is the main obstacle to quantify the Well, so the, the obstacles to quantify the I think. We'd have to work in a three-sorted setting where the asymptotic couple has the language uh, with the SP and the deltas that yeah, yeah, yeah. it gives the quantified elimination for the asymptotic couple. But they would also need their um, the, yeah, the the, the so-called switchman predicates, the big lambda, big omega, and probably um, some related things. Yeah, but the main difference again with the quantified elimination would be the LD. And then nothing. I guess so. So what so what's what is um, another thing that's nice is that if you actually take this if you take one, two, and three and then swap out three for this is theory of the asymptotic couple of T, then you recover their asymptotization for T essentially. Um, and so sorry, say again. You switch out what? The, so here, so one and two both hold for T and T log. Yeah. Three is is special to T log because I'm saying the asymptotic couple has to be the model theory of the asymptotic couple of T log. So if you swap out this for asymptotic couple of T, then one, two, and three is precisely a like you recover the asymptotization for for T. And so this is this is like one sort of guiding philosophy is that. I'm trying to, I'm sort of viewing T as being a C-closed LEH field that just happens to have its asymptotic couple, and mine has the uh, asymptotic couple uh, gamma. Well, I don't know if that answers your question about LD being, but that, I guess that gives, that gives some, um, uh, hope that, that this would be the correct asymptotization because if you just swap out here, you get their asymptotization.
last time I heard a mentioning of this yak-stick method or something along that line. So what oh. was that used for? Yeah, I mean, so that's just a way of... Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't mention any, anything about, like, the details of how to prove this, but really it involves adjoining PC sequences um, and then looking at sort of the, the rate of, I want to call it, pseudo-convergence. And so that's going to be a certain cut in the uh, asymptotic couple. And so uh, just, so like you know that your PC sequence comes from a, uh, adjoining some element with some nice property, you can say like very specific things about this cut. And then a, an obstruction to something like this would have to involve a PC sequence with a cut that doesn't have that property. And so, so that, that's sort of what the yardstick method is. So if I'm not, not really uh, uh, yeah, I guess it's just one of the one of the tricks to getting some of these things. And also for, for proving the um, the Lugo closure thing.